Hello, I'm Deborah Kennedy, environmental artist and author. I'd like to welcome you to my art exhibition, Nature Speaks, Listening Together. In this book, I've tried to capture the profound bond between ourselves and the larger natural world. When I was young, I grew up in a very natural environment, climbing trees, eating mulberries. My mother taught me to bird a little bit. And as a young adult, I kind of continued that with backpacking, snorkeling in the tropics, and just generally having a wonderful time enjoying the gifts of nature. As I got a little bit older, I started reading more about our environmental problems and became pretty alarmed. So then I started doing installations and public artwork on environmental issues. And after I had done that work, I decided to do the book. I wanted to be able to talk a little bit more about it and hopefully have it go out into the world. I think as our environmental problems are becoming more and more obvious, here in California we've had terrible droughts and then flooding, which is characteristic of climate change. I think as food becomes more and more expensive, we have to remember nature equals food. And I think as these things become more obvious, people will become more willing to engage with these problems. Sometimes I think that we hear a lot of statistics. We hear scientific information, but it's told to us in a very neutral kind of way. The goal with the art and the poetry is to try and get people to feel something more about this. So art should be a way to arouse our feelings. That's really the goal of the book, is to tell people about some of these various issues that are going on, but in a way that touches their heart. And this piece is called Changed Climate 2017. And for me, really, it's a metaphor for what's going on today. I've heard a number of people go, that's powerful. So it is reaching to people, it's making them think, and there's something about it, the, the books are all very delicately balanced on these sharp points and it feels uncertain. It, it has a kind of, so it, it captured a lot of what I'm, I'm trying to express in, in, the, in this piece. And I also, I did it to my own book. So uh, part of the question is, you know, who's reading these books? We sort of have this assault on science and reason going on now. I really hope that people engage more with environmental issues and realize how important it is to their own health and the health of their children. So I'm really hoping that if everybody just start pushing a little bit, just doing what they can do, maybe it's to give $3 to an environmental organization. Maybe it's to buy an organic t-shirt once a year. Talk with your friends about it. Read a little more about it. If everybody did a little bit, we could have a profound effect. We and our children cannot live healthy lives without a thriving natural environment. My hope is we will bring a concern for the environment to the center of our lives and our work. Live green. The foresters arrived to count every tree still left, stump, standing, or topped. They carefully marked their grids, added the numbers, and shrewdly concluded. Repeated disturbances hasten ecological surprises. Now the buckeyes, sassafras, and swamp ash are belting out hot new songs saplings bursting up from every stump, and frowsy shrubs are running riot in the skid tracks. Each thicket pulses with the beat of nature's deep redemption. Grant the smallest claim, and the force of nature blasts back with lusty new rhythms. Thank you.